Move next door. So we won't be disturbed. We have a whole night all to ourselves. Mm. Oh, I love you. Mm. Hey, it's me. I missed you so much. Yes, this is Mrs. Walsh. I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I'm calling from Los Angeles. Just a minute, who is this? This is Sheldon Harper, Tad Channing's attorney. Sheldon Harper? Uh, the operator just said that um, Tad Channing was calling me. Well, no. Oh, actually, I'm trying to locate Mr. Channing. Has he contacted you? No, and I have no idea where you could possibly find him. Unless, of course, you tried the Los Angeles police. The police? Yes. Your client is wanted for attempted rape here. What? Oh, no, no, no. There must be some misunderstanding. I'm afraid there have been several of those, and believe you me, you're not the only one looking for them. Even this lawyer is looking for Ted. They'll never find him now. I was beginning to think that you weren't going to call me back. I kept offering, calling your office and leaving. Barbara, messages. you mustn't call me anymore at the office. Good, then you call me. No, no, look, I told you, I can't. That was before you thought we were going to be discovered. Nothing has changed, Barbara. Lucinda and Sierra have each accused me, to my face, of having an affair. But, darling, they'd accuse you of that anyway, even if you'd been celibate as a monk. Yes, well, what about Tad Channing? Ah, oh, Tad Channing. Don't worry about him any longer. He can't hurt us. What do you mean by that? He's gone. Trust me. No. I'm sorry. I can't risk it, Barbara. Uh, I just came to return your key. Well, I thought I brought it with me. Well, very Freudian. You really don't want to give it back to me, so you've misplaced it. It's well, gone. that'll give you time to just reconsider, so... Why don't we, um, just go back into my office and we can search for the key. Why okay? is it so difficult for you to understand because me? Because, darling, I can't we're stay. all alone. The shop is closed. Hi, would you like a drink? Ah, the lady of the hour. I'll have another brandy, brandy? please. Brandy? Tom, same for you. One of your vintage brands? Yep. Uh, no thanks. That was about the beginning of the end for me. I'll have a glass of red wine, please. My brandy? Oh, come on. I mean it, Jerry. That night marked the beginning of the end of my working relationship with Barbara and the beginning of a lot of problems with Margo. Oh, Tom, don't you think you're exaggerating just a little bit? I mean, I figured you'd have a major hangover the next day after you passed out and I had to put you to bed. What? But... Well, after you passed out and I had to put you to bed. I mean, you were really in some... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up. You had to put me to bed? Yeah, with a forklift. Well, you were dead to the world. As a matter of fact, when I left Barbara's that night, I told her that a stampede of wild buffalo wasn't going to wake you up. What about a beautiful, very available woman? Are you kidding? You couldn't have made it with Miss Universe that night. Tom, you were comatose. You know, I've heard of people drinking brandy before, but this was...
world turns. This portion brought to you today by Bold 3 Detergent, with fabric softener built right in. And by Ultra Pampers. Even when they're wet, they're dry. Just a minute ago, you were all ready to enjoy the romance of this beautiful place. Soft music, champagne for two. Ryan is coming. He left a message. Oh, Lord, if he walks in here and sees us like this. Sees what? A husband and wife sharing the same bed? What could be more natural? You left that message, didn't you? Why? Oh, I should think my reasons would be obvious, Lassie. You were about to divorce me. I wanted to make sure you knew exactly what you'd be given up. No! No, you egotistical! Foyer! Get out of here! Uh, not the way I usually enjoy my champagne. Or my women. Shall I propose a toast? You come one step closer and you'll be a piece of toast! To the naked truth, long may it wave. Dear. Oh, help me! Shannon? Oh, oh, what is it? Is it another snake? Please. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. A snake is right. <sighs> ah, Harriet. Delighted to see you. Would you like some champagne? My, my, Harriet. It seems you've lost both your shoes tonight. Just like old times, isn't it, Mom? Well, almost. Sorry, David and Ellen couldn't make it. Yes, so am I, dear. Okay. Well, I told them I'd babysit for Danny, but they insisted to stay at the cabin in case Betsy calls about sure. Steve. Oh, well, I don't blame them about Well, I certainly don't like the me? idea of Betsy driving all the way to Chicago by herself. She's not alone. Oh, well, Craig's with her. Well, that makes me hope that she doesn't find Steve. If he sees her with Craig, then he'll really have a fit. So don't you think it's about time that Steve learned to control his jealousy? Well, good, I don't know if it's jealousy or what, but <laughs> those two don't get along. They had a terrible fight at the cabin here tonight. Well, boys will be boys, I guess. Hey, brother. Mm -hmm. Any chance we can persuade you to stay on a few more days? I wish we could stay. Um, matter of fact, I've been doing a little persuasion of my own here, trying to get Mom to drive out tomorrow with us, take a look at the new house. Oh, dear. I do appreciate your invitation, and I'm looking forward to visiting you, too, but uh, after Kim's baby is born. <laughs> yeah, how many days exactly is that going to be? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Would you settle for an estimate, my darling? I guess. At the moment, Dr. Samuels is predicting the first week in September. Uh... Give or take. Yeah, I wish you could be more specific. <laughs> oh, you yeah, do like to have oh, you taking a cut right. You're running with me. Just come with me. Tom, leave me until you tell me what this is. You will is. see. Come Wait, with me. Tell me just bye. 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 There goes my son. I hope I'm not too late. Hello, Mr. Reyes. I'm sorry. Have we met? This I'm... is one of my models, Denise Darcy. Uh, I was at that incredible party that your mother-in-law gave for you and your wife. What? Diana's. Was was that a Barbara Ryan original that um that your wife was wearing? She looked stunning. Uh, yes, it was. As a matter of fact, I've just designed something new for Sierra, and Mr. Reyes is here to pick it up. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back with it. Uh, thank you. Barbara Ryan is is very talented, isn't she? Yes, she is. Well, now that you're working for Barbara Ryan, I want photographs of her lover coming and going from her apartment. Why are you staring at me? I'm sorry. I, I was just thinking that I knew you someplace other than the party. Are you a friend of, of Tad Channing's? Uh, he was a business associate, yes. Was? Uh, yes, he recently returned to Los Angeles. Well, here we are. Oh, thank you, Barbara. I hope Sierra likes it very much, if you'd excuse us. Just for a minute, please. Search your apartment for that key. I will, and I'll call you. No, we can't risk that. I'll call you. Very attractive guy. Let's get right down to business, okay? Do you want to be my signature model, or don't you? More than anything in the world. But I thought that you said that Mrs. Walsh had an objection with that. 
Mrs. Walsh had another model that she wanted to use from New York. And unfortunately, or fortunately for you, she's not available. So I convinced her to use some local talent who might be more willing to see things my way. Mm. I'm very good at following directions. Good. Then we understand each other. I will have Ambrose Bingham draw up a new contract for you, say, for a trial period of 30 days. 90 days. 90 days. Be here at 10 sharp for your first fittings, okay? And Denise, I want you to forget everything that's happened between us up to this moment, including seeing me going to Tad Channing's suite last night. Got it? As soon as I sign that contract, total amnesia. For you two. Why don't you start by telling Margot what really happened that night? Oh, come on, Tom. We've been all through this already. Why don't you tell her we never really slept together? What? If that's what you want to believe, Tom, that's just fine. Cut the lies, Barbara. Jerry just told me he put me to bed that night dead drunk. Well, yes, we've been celebrating. Read my lips, Barbara. Dead drunk, out cold. I couldn't even make it to my bed, much less make it with you. Look! I don't know what Jerry's been telling you, but just remember that he'd do anything to strike back at me from taking simply a barb away from him. Oh, okay. is that why you're trying to get rid of him? So he's not around me, so I don't know the truth? Do you hate me that much? Why, you little trick. Oh, you Just wait a minute. minute. Look, I want you both to get out of here, okay? Get out of here. You're not going to walk all over me to put your pathetic little lives back together again. You can't face up to what you really did. Well, you he didn't. Shut up, Margo! I'm not finished with you. There are not a lot of people around here who believe in you anymore. My dad, Kim, and my mother. Now, wait just a minute. You wait just a minute. And you listen real carefully to what I have to say. I'm not going to tell anybody yet. Not unless you pull one of your nasty little pranks again on anybody, especially Brian and Shannon. But if you do, I swear I'll take out a full page ad in the Argus and I'll tell the entire world just what Simply Barbara really means. Every last sordid detail. Let's go. Mrs. Walsh, I'm, I'm very sorry about what happened to Sierra. You know? Yes. How do you know that? Oh, Craig. Does no. Craig tell you everything? No, he didn't tell me, and I really don't want to talk about him right you now. You want to do our family a good turn? Keep Craig away from Sierra. It's interesting how I'm able to help you these days. Maybe you'll stop treating me like an enemy. I doubt that. It would have been better if you would have trusted me when I warned you about Tad. Oh, gosh, you just love being right about him. No, you hurt a lot of people with your alliance with Tad. My alliance with Tad? My What about... <sighs> what were we talking about? Let's get back to our prime goal here, which is improving Lily's life. If you want to help this family, you talk to my daughter. And you convince her that she's to stay with the family physician. Because if John Dixon gets a look at the medical records and sees her blood type, he will know absolutely that she cannot be my child. I will. All right, would you just tell Lily I miss her? Why don't you tell her yourself? Come out to the farm. Tell her yourself. All right, maybe I will. I'd like to see just how Lily and Holden are managing anyway. Oh, I'm so glad you called. I was feeling kind of down. Um, I'm sorry. Did you ever get to talk to Holden? Figure out why he changed so suddenly? Yeah. We talked. Didn't do us any good, though. Still avoiding me like the plague. Yeah. What about, um, Dusty? Okay, Dusty's terrific. He's my best friend. 
It's so nice to have him back. So safe and secure. I don't know. I do. It's a very special feeling. Yeah, but if Dusty's so wonderful, how come I keep dreaming about Holden? You know, I have just come up with the best idea. I think the two of us should go riding together tomorrow. Just the two of us, girl talk. And we can discuss all the things that we're feeling that we shouldn't be. I think it might do us both a lot of good. <laughs> that sounds great. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm so glad I finally have a sister. Me too. Good night, Lily. I'll see you tomorrow, Sierra. Ma'am. Well, my goodness, you know, I, I have never been invited to dinner by prescription before. Oh, I just thought maybe you might like a break from all the worries, the problems out at the farm. <laughs> Meg, uh, getting over that unfortunate incident with yes she is thank, thank god. god i hope that she forgets that all oh she's young resilient she will <laughs> in a month she will have forgotten all about it and you will too i hope so <laughs> is anything else bothering you you know something it's not fair you you can see right through me can't you <laughs> uh, yes you can <laughs> oh it's nothing i really i don't want to spoil our lovely dinner oh well, you won't what is it well, you know that phone call I had just as you came to pick me up? It was from my sister-in-law, Elizabeth. Her husband, Henry, had a heart attack a while back, and it seems he's in a real deep depression now. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that happens. They start feeling like invalids, you know. They have to watch every step they take. It's very, very common in heart patients. She says he just sits at the window and stares. Mm -hmm. He was such a very active man. Will that, will that change? Oh, well, I don't know. I, w I wouldn't know without a little bit more... You know, information if I knew more about his case. Mm -hmm. I'd have to talk to his doctor. Look at his medical record. You know something? There are an awful lot of advances that have been made in heart disease. That's my field, heart mm -hmm. disease. If I could help him, I'd be glad to move him over to Memorial. Would you do that? Oh, my goodness, that would be just wonderful. Sure, sure. That would be wonderful. And then Elizabeth and Henry could probably come stay with us. We have a big family reunion. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. my. What is this? Oh, that is, that's almost too beautiful to eat. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's raw fish. Oh. Mm. Ah. I know I've been kind of rough on you lately. Yeah. Well, at least you're talking to me now. I mean, you didn't walk out of the room when you saw me in here. <laughs> well, it was for your own good. I had to make a point. What point? You and me. We don't fit. It's kind of like... Trying to put a horse collar on a mule. It's not going to work. What, am I the mule? No. You're not the mule. So, uh, now that Dusty's back, I hope things work out for you guys. That's not what Meg's hoping. Yeah, I know. But Meggie has her dreams, too. And I'd like to see them work out. But I don't think they're going to. Dusty lives in this big penthouse with servants. And he's probably still going to go to Harvard. So? So, Dusty's going places. I'm going to be stuck here, pitching hay and shoveling manure for the rest of my life. I lost my chance of improving myself. I don't have much of an education. And the only experience I have is working for your mother. Well, I just think you're feeling sorry for yourself because of what happened with Tad Channing. You don't understand, Lily. I'm a loser. You guys are winners. So go for it. Take advantage of it. Oh, look at you. Still swollen. Do you have any idea what time it is? I'm sorry. I had a business meeting. Oh, but not with Tad Channing. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Just I know that he's left town. Why are you looking at me like that? Over the past few weeks, every time you've worked late, you've claimed you were working with Tad Chan Channing. I didn't claim anything of the sort. It was the truth. And now that he's left town, 
I have a lot of work to catch up on. Mm. So, were you working with my mother? No, I wasn't. I know you weren't at the office. Sierra, what is this, an inquisition? Is this because Channing has made an accusation I have a mistress somewhere? Is that it? You would take the word of a proven liar over your own husband? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a key. A key to one of the offices at the construction site. Have you seen it anywhere? A key? No, I haven't seen a key. I'm going to clean up. of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by Downy, the fabric softener that combines skin-loving softness with the airy April freshness you love. And by Mountain-Grown Folgers Coffee. Folgers, the best part of waking up. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. And now part two as the world turns. Tony! Can I get a hug? Yes, oh. what a terrific surprise. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> yes, yes, I was all alone in this house before, but... Oh, well, I just want to come find out how you're doing. I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. I came to see you. I know you came to see me, and you and missed me, and I'm sorry we're going to make up for it. We'll, me and my big girl will catch up, all okay. right? <laughs> Holden, I'd like to have a word with you, if you don't mind. Oh, how about going upstairs? I, I got something for you I want to show you. What do you want to talk to Holden about? Business, darling, just a business matter. Business? See, see, things are picking up. <laughs> Holden, you swore to me that nothing was going on between you and Miss Lily. There's not. But then what is that little scene that we just walked in on? Are you calling me a liar, Miss Walsh? I'm not calling Walsh? you anything. I am asking you a question. Lily was worried about my lip. Nothing more. I damn well kept my word, Miss Walsh. So I don't care what you think you saw. You did? Oh, my. All right. I believe you. I don't know why I believe you. And I do have business to talk to you. The new man at the stables, he's not working out. He's no good. I want... If you want it, the job is yours again, and I'll give you a $25 a week raise. $25 a week? Yeah. And on top of it, just for this summer, I will offer you an air-conditioned room in the servants' quarters in my house, free of charge. Then you won't have to have the long commute here to the farm. Ms. Walsh, you can take your stables and your $25 a week raise and your air-conditioned room and you can shove them. Oh, my, Holden. Holden, what do you know that I don't know that you can dare speak to me like that? I dare speak to you like that because I am not your servant anymore. Uh. And I don't plan on being anybody's ever again. Hello. Holden, is that you? It's Emily Stewart. Oh, hey there, Emily. How'd you know I was thinking about you? Guess we're just on the same wavelength. You busy? Not if you're free. How would you like to come to the Hughes house for a family barbecue? Um, Sounds crowded. How about I come over there and pick you up, and uh, we go out to the swimming hole for a moonlight swim. Come on, Emma. Oh, dear. <laughs> I Here. understand why Japanese women are so slender. Yeah. <laughs> Just try to think of it as an extension of your fingers. Hold, hold on, hold oh, on, like hold on. And we'll pick it up. Oh, very strong yeah. hands. You would have been a good farmer. Yeah, maybe. <gasps> Mm, pretty good. Mm, very I good. I want to ask you, have you thought any more about Meg taking a job down at the hospital? Yes, I have. It's kind of upsetting when you think that she can make a decision now that would affect her whole life. 
Yeah, I feel the same way about Dustin, you know. Him taking a job as an orderly in the hospital when he should be getting his grades to go to school. Well, I guess we just have to let them make their own mistakes. I guess so. I guess it's, uh... Oh, for crying out loud, what are we talking about the kids for? It's, it's our night to howl, <laughs> is it not nice. here? More sake? Oh, I'd love it. It's so yeah, delicious. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you let me have a few. All right. There you go. Oh, dear. It's hot. <laughs> To you. To you. <laughs> mm. I'm having such a lovely time. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. And thank you for your really generous offer to uh, to look into Henry's case. That would be wonderful. It'd be lovely if Elizabeth and Josh could stay with us. We could have a big family reunion, too. <laughs> thank you. I mean, uh, origato. <laughs> origato. Origato. <laughs> Well, I was talking to your mom on the drive over here, and uh, she seems real lonely without you. You think I should move back home, don't you? No, I think you should do what you need, but, you know, it might be nice to spend some weekends there. Maybe. No, oh, talking about all this gives me a headache. I really have to take some aspirin. Just some that yeah, top, top shelf, top shelf. You want to be helpful? Talk Lily into staying with our family physician for her school physical. If John Dixon gets one look at Lily's blood type, he'll know she couldn't possibly be my daughter. You know, it's really strange because I hardly ever get headaches, but I really have a major one right now. Come here, I'm going to try to put that beret in better. Come sit down. Okay. <laughs> here. You know, um, is it like a good idea to have a, a physical like before school and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm supposed to have one, but if you talk to my mother, you wouldn't believe that. I mean, she's making such a big stink about me going to Dr. Dixon for a physical. Well, I mean, why would you, though? Well, why not? I saw him at the hospital. He was really nice and everything. What have I got to lose? Well, I think... Well, you know how your mom feels about Dr. Dixon, and I'm thinking maybe she thinks that you're trying to upset her or something. Well, fine. If it's going to be such a big deal, then I'll go to Dr. Stafford, the old family doctor. I think that's a good idea. Maybe. Maybe. I think this looks look. better. Do I need the bathroom? I'm about to take a shower. Got a hot date with Emily Stewart. You most wonderful, dear, sweet man. Whoa. Hi, everyone, Jerry. What the hell have I done? Uh, oh, it's not important. It doesn't matter anymore. It really doesn't. Thank you so much. I'm Margo. I'm Tom's oh, wife. We met once hi, before yes. at Shannon and Brian's wedding. Well, I must say, you two certainly look happy. I've had a part in that. I am delighted. You know, I kept hoping that divorce business wasn't for real. Well, there's a lot of things that haven't been for real, Jerry. But one thing that is, is we'd like to take you out to celebrate. So if you can get out of that very business-like suit and go change, we would like to take you to a Hughes family barbecue. Well, okay. You know, look, I, I won't ask any questions. Ask just, any questions. Just give me just five change. minutes to change you my clothes. five. I'll leave this right. Take the lipstick off your face. Okay. <laughs> Jerry must think we're crazy. I am crazy. Oh, yeah. Not you. Oh, vice versa. I owe you one big, fat apology. Shut up. You know what makes me feel really good? Yes, I know what makes you me feel really good. Will you be serious for a minute? Okay. It makes me feel really good to know that you forgave me before you even knew that I didn't sleep with Barbara. It shows so much trust in our relationship, and I'll never forget that. Oh, Tom. Well, I, I told her it was a special occasion. But the baby, I can't... Have milk. I can't believe you got it in a bottle. That's so cute. Thank you. Thank you. Look, oh. To my wife and our baby, who I love very much. And they love you, to the three of us. There aren't many people left who believe in you, Barbara. Dad, Kim, my mother. I won't say anything yet, unless you pull another one of your nasty pranks on anybody, especially Brian and Shannon. 
You do, and I swear I'll take a full-page ad out in the Argus to tell the world what Simply Barbara really stands for. Every single sordid detail. You wouldn't dare. Ambrose Bob Ryan. Yes, I'm sorry to call you so late. Well, listen. I've changed my mind about dissolving my partnership with Lisa McCall. Yes, that's right. Forget about the whole thing. Are you going to go swimming at this hour of the night? The Snyder Farm. Ah, oh, Holden the Hunk invited her. What? Well, I guess if old hunky Holden invited me, I might go for a midnight swim myself. Go over my dead body. Uh, I'm only teasing. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm reserving all your moonlight swim time. All right. How about a quick trip to the uh, Adriatic? I'm huh? swimming under the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, midnight swimming is fun, no matter where you go. Yeah, it also can be very dangerous. And, I know. Uh, oh, it can. Well, I know, but you... I once dove into a... call Shannon in the Dominican Republic, and I'll reverse the charges. You don't mind, do you? No. Not if you're going to reverse okay. the charges. <laughs> Emily, um, when you go out to the farm today, can you say hi to Meg Snyder for me? Sure. I understand Meg is interested in the job at Memorial. Really? Oh, jeez, I gotta come uh, visit you at the office more often than... She's a real fox. <gasps> She's a little old for you, pal. Oh, hey, a guy can dream, can he? At your age, we usually do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no. uh, did you reach Shannon? No, the line's busy. I'll try her again later. Déjanos solo, por favor. Sí, señor. Muchas gracias. De nada. You know Spanish? Ah, Harriet, I know so many, many things. May I tempt you? Uh, no, no, really, thank you. What is that? Sea urchin. I'm going to be sick. Perhaps you'd prefer some ugly fruit. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Please, send someone up to get my luggage. I am checking out immediately, and so is Ms. Corbin in the room next door. I know you'd like calamares in su propia tinta. Well, that translates to squid in its own ink. No, my husband will be making his own arrangements. Uh, tell them I'll be staying on. Tell them yourself. The food's quite good, really. Si, sí, Senor Fuentes. Harriet, are you I'd ready to go home? What so do you awesome. mean? You haven't got your divorce I, I, I yet. It doesn't food. matter. I, I what do you, it you doesn't food. matter? Don't you see? And, uh, he is not going to give me a divorce. Well, he he didn't food. say he wouldn't. No, of course not. He's well, just stringing me along, and as soon as I think I'm free of him, si. he would contest this divorce, and we'd be right back where we thought we, <sighs> we were before. We might as well go home. <sighs> well, I see you've changed your mind about the food. Harry, go finish packing. Mm. Oh, on second thought. Don't leave me here alone with him. He's still naked under that robe. <gasps> ah, such <sighs> modesty. And after eight years as my wife, you call me that one more time, and I promise I will turn you into a living voodoo doll. Got it? <laughs> That's it. Oh. Mm. You ladies certainly travel light. Must you leave? I think we're just getting interesting. Oh, bless you. Come. Uh, take these bags downstairs, please. And uh, we'll need a cab to the airport. We're going to be taking the next flight off of this island. Next flight is at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What? That is ridiculous. I declare that our airport is closed at this late an hour. Oh, didn't you know it? Oh, right. Take our bags back to Ms. Corbin's room next door. I regret that. that is not possible. Why not? The room has been taken. Been well, taken? take whoever so you rushed in there and move them to another room. No other room available, I regret. Stop with those I regrets. Oh, what are we going to do? This is awful. They cannot do this to us. There's no problem, really. The ladies are quite welcome to spend the night here with me. What do you think about me coming home for the weekend? 
Oh, I think that's wonderful, think darling. Wonderful? Yes. Okay. Well, I think I figured you wouldn't be that busy. That no, busy I'm not all. busy on the weekend. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, 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 I yes. love that very much. It was Ivan's idea, really. Well, that was a thoughtful oh, idea. Was well, it was idea. partly Thank Lily's you. idea, too. Oh. Hi, everybody. This is Walsh. How nice to see you here. Hey, you fit right in on the farm, you know that? Oh. <laughs> Well, if you'll allow me to use the telephone, I'll call my chauffeur and then I'll get out yes, of your way. Please, please. Right, listen, I can give you a ride back when I go, if you want. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm going to your building. I'm going to drop by and see Tonio and Sierra. Oh. Lily, I scheduled your examination at the hospital for tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock now, okay? Oh, I hope you didn't go to too much trouble for that. Why, are you backing out? Well, no, I just thought that I thought it would be a better idea if I go see my family doctor. Is that okay? Oh, well, yes. I have always thought it far more suitable that way. <laughs> sure. Whatever you want to do is okay. Okay. Hey, listen, I hope we can do this again. Yes. And soon, too, okay? Yes. I'm going to practice nibbling on the little fish out in my pond as they swim by. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank it you. It was. Really Same cute. here. <laughs> Same here. Well, uh, the shrimp boat is leaving. Hi, Iva. Good night, Iva. I'm going to walk you in the car. Good night, darling. I'm going to walk you in the car. I'll be right back. All right, Iva. Good night. Thank you again. Well, 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 well. You look absolutely radiant, Mama. <laughs> well, I had really a wonderful time. <laughs> oh, and you'll never guess. John said that he's going to look into Uncle Henry's case. And if he thinks he can help him, I'm going to invite Elizabeth and Josh to stay here with us. Do you think it's too late to call them right now? Sierra, look. Let's settle this business about Ted Channing. No. Right? What's the matter? It's just um, the mention of his name, and then all right, I'm, touching I'm, me, I'm, I'm and sorry. that night, I'm, I'm, I'm please, sorry. Tony, it's you all right. don't. You, you have to understand. All right. How about if I make some dinner for you? I know you haven't eaten. Well, tomorrow I'm going to get your shirts laundered, and I will remember this time no starch. Antonio, this, this is my raincoat. But I um, left it at Tad's that night. Uh, how did it get here? I brought it here. Craig gave it to me at Taz Hotel Suite. But you didn't have it with you when you and Mother were picking up at Margot's that night. I brought it here first. Sierra, why are you asking all these questions? You know, I could have had these cleaned. Now they're ruined. Why didn't you tell me about these shoes? No, Mama. No, d don't make that phone call. I don't want him in the house, Cousin Josh. I don't want him anywhere near Lisa, this house. It's not like you at all. What's the matter? What is it? <laughs> I... John told me you like raw fish. Yes, Daddy, I do. No, Let delicious. Um, I need to speak to Mama alone for a, a few minutes. Um, yeah. Would you go in the parlor or something? Okay, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, now, Ida, tell me, what, what is it? you've got against your cousin Josh. Come on, Mama. I'm out here. Um. I, I always... I wanted to tell you this for a long time, and I, I just I couldn't do it, so... What, Ida? Cousin Josh was the one who got me pregnant. And he, he forced himself on me and said that if I ever told anybody about it, um, he would convince everybody that it was my fault. And I, I got pregnant. And that's why I ran away and I couldn't face anybody. I mean, it was my own cousin. And it was incest. And... That was why it was so horrible and painful, and I couldn't tell you about it. 
I mean, my old cousin. God, Mama. Please forgive me. It's you. It's you that have to forgive me. What? This is all my fault, either. There are things I should have told you a long time ago. You see, Heidi, you're not the only one that's been carrying around a secret. What are you talking about? Where to begin? I... Oh. When Aunt Elizabeth married Henry, she was pregnant. Henry knew that Josh wasn't his son, but he, he raised him as his son all the same. <sighs> Wait, wait a minute. And you mean, you mean Josh isn't my, he's no. not my relative? No, sweetie. He's not my blood relative? He's not your cousin. But that's not all. I wish that, that your father were here now. We plan to tell you this together. What, Mama? We wanted to tell you when, when you were old enough to understand. But then you ran away, and then your papa died. I... Mama, I know that that's not any excuse either, but... Please forgive me. Mama, uh, what should I forgive you for? Forgive you for what? not telling you sooner that you are an adopted child. A very much loved, very much wanted adopted child. You see, when Seth was born, Dr. Davenport thought that I might not be able to have any more children. And, and your pop and I, we... We wanted a little girl so very much. I'm adopted, huh? You and Papa adopted me? Stay tuned for Capital. Next on most of these CBS stations. Maternity wear courtesy of Motif Collections. Accessories by R.J. Graziano. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.